Happy Thursday, YouTube. I am here to um, give the final part of my series in regards to my neck dissection and thyroidectomy. Um, just as a reminder, I had my thyroidectomy of, um, in December, whoa, in October of 2018. Um, I had a total thyroidectomy and then after cancerous lymph nodes were discovered on the right side of my neck, in April of this year, 2019, I had a radical neck dissection. I had about 48 lymph nodes removed. Um, six came back definitely positive. The others came back not positive or hopefully not positive. Um, that's the best way that I can describe them. Usually um, when lymph nodes or cancer cells or any sort of cells are sent to pathology, they can come back grossly positive not positive, meaning negative or undetermined. Um, there's lots of different words used in those um, situations, but thankfully most of mine came back um, not positive, so I was grateful for that. I'm still um, planning on posting the video of my one month post-op from my neck dissection. I did have a rough time with that, but I think a lot of that had to do with me not being prepared. So if anybody um, has a neck dissection coming up, I certainly don't want you to fear. Um, if you have a good surgeon, a good ENT otolaryngologist who usually does perform those surgeries, I highly, highly, highly want to tell you the importance of not being afraid. Um, but do your research. I just wasn't prepared. Of course I was scared knowing that I still had cancer that needed to be removed. Um, but mostly I just, you know, expected to kind of breeze through it like I did um, when I had my thyroid removed. So I'm just going to talk a little bit um, more in depth about my neck dissection. This is going to be video three and the final uh, video of that series other than um, when I post my video that I had one week post-op off, um, post off of the neck dissection back this spring. So <clears throat> I'm suffering a little bit still from a cold. Um, I do get hoarse and as a result, a side effect um, still from my neck dissection and just everything they did around that area. But I don't think that my hoarseness today is related to that. I'm also a teacher and I do a lot of talking, so bear with me. Um, so, I had my surgery, um, I've had both my surgeries very early in the morning. It's always good to be the first case um, of the day if you're having a surgery. Not that it's a bad thing to not be the first case, but if you are the first case of the day, I think that that's always really good. Um, having your surgery early, fresh in the morning, getting it out of the way is always just um, better in my opinion and for me it's worked in my favor. Um, I did have my surgery at the Midtown Emory location in Atlanta, Georgia. I live in the South. Um, I don't want to say any names, but I will say that the surgeons and their um, team at Emory is really fantastic. When I had my consult initially a couple of weeks before my surgery, um, it was actually probably about four to six weeks before my surgery, my surgeon and her physician's assistant made me feel very comfortable. And um, like I said, and like I say always, my endocrinologist here, my ENT here, and his physician's assistant, along with my um, primary care physician, pain management doctor, and the several others that I have, <laughs> my oncologist as well, they're all fantastic and they make me feel very comfortable. Um, I highly recommend that before you go into surgery that you have a doctor or a surgeon that makes you feel very comfortable. So I went in for my surgery. I will say I was very, very afraid um, before having my neck dissection and I remember being sort of rude to my mom and my boyfriend just because my nerves were absolutely wrecked. Um, I feel bad about that, but um, as most of you know, when we go through stressful situations, sometimes we're not always in the best mood or on our best behavior. Um, 
but I do remember that um, in prep for surgery when they were getting my vitals, putting in my IV, um, my boyfriend came back with me and that helped. My mom came back with me beforehand, which helped. And I remember I wanted my boyfriend to be the last person to be with me before um, I did speak with my surgeon briefly before they took me back to the room where I'd be operated on. Um, the uh, One of my surgeon's assistants, I believe one of her residents, came in to discuss with me briefly just the side effects of um, a radical neck dissection. Some of those side effects are um, numbness in your mouth and face and paralysis, which does not happen often, but of course they do go over those um, possible side effects uh, to you. Um, I did not have anything other than a lazy eye for several months and um, the first couple of days uh, after my surgery, my right, um, my left, I'm sorry, this is my right, my uh, right side face was sort of paralyzed. I could only smile on the left, so I was like, sort of like that. Um, and of course, like I said, I had that lazy eye for a couple of months, but all of that has healed. My face and mouth healed within 24 hours. Um, I was not able to taste anything for, I believe, about three days, but those were as serious um, as side effects as I had. I do remember um, the first couple of weeks, I did have some sinus and nasal issues. I woke up um, not really able to breathe very well, but you have to understand, they do a lot. A neck dissection, um, uses a lot of nerves and they try very hard to preserve those so just keep in mind that when you're having a neck dissection it's a lot more invasive than a thyroidectomy they basically take your neck apart and put it back together it's a lot more like putting pieces of a puzzle together and they do their best not to tamper with any nerves but sometimes our bodies you know um, it gets a little bit confused when they go in there. So I did have some of those, um, you know, side effects just very briefly. Um, I remember when the ENT's um, resident, who was also there in surgery, came in to discuss those possible side effects with me. Um, I was like, please be careful, you know. I, um, I'm scared, of course, you know, having cancer removed from your body, but it's also scary knowing that nerves that control your face and motor function are being tampered with and I made a joke and I said I really like my face please try to keep me me um, and my boyfriend made a joke to um, the doctor also saying I like her face too and I know it's one of those situations where you just have to be there at the time but it was funny and it just sort of lightened the mood and um, you know just raised the momentum in a positive light so all this was done right after Easter um, I do remember when I had the second surgery, unlike my thyroidectomy, um, they didn't ask me questions. Now when I had my thyroidectomy, they didn't ask me to count back from 10, which I think is really good. I think the less you can get your patient to be prepared for going under anesthesia, the better. So they trick you. A lot of times they'll just ask you questions. When I had my thyroid removed, I remember they asked me questions about where I taught. Um, but I remember having, during my neck dissection, they didn't ask me questions. Um, they actually were just sort of talking to each other. I remember they probably gave me like a stronger dose of a sedative before my neck dissection. And I don't remember them asking me questions. I don't remember them putting, you know, the mask on my face to put me under or anything. The last thing I remember before having my surgery, my neck dissection, was just the doctors come conversing with one another. So I guess whenever they put the medicine in my IV, um, the last thing I remember was just them discussing, are we gonna do an ultrasound? You know, what would you like to do before actually cutting her open? And it wasn't scary or anything. I remember waking up though um, <laughs> really groggy and um, I felt really good just like after my um, thyroidectomy. I remember actually being in less pain when I woke up from my neck dissection and I remember just of course you're groggy, you say odd things, there are things you don't remember. And I remember telling the nurse as she was rolling me from 
post-op to my room where I would be um, staying in for the next 24 to 60 hours. Um, she was rolling me across and all I could think of was that song that came out in the early 2000s and I told the nurse about it and she cracked up. There were so many people in the way as she was trying to roll me on my hospital bed from post-op area to my room. There were so many people in my way. In my head, all I could think of was that song. Move, get out the way, get out the way, get out the way. And I said it to her and I rapped it to her so I could of course talk, you know, I woke up also awesome, you know, I could speak even with all that that they did and even though the right side of my face was paralyzed and I couldn't taste or anything, I could rap and I could sing hip hop. So I said that with the actual word, the B word, um, and she just cracked up. So that was probably the funniest part of my surgery. The nurse rolling me into my room cracked up because the whole time as she was rolling me up there, I sang that song. So um, it was a pretty positive experience. Um, I do remember my neck dissection hospital stay was a pretty positive experience, but also a really emotional experience. Um, the anesthesia and just life, I guess at the time, made me more emotional. Um, when their chaplain at Emory came to see me, I remember breaking down and crying. And, but in a positive way, you know, just discussing how I had been through so much in such a little period of time, and she just made me feel great. I don't remember the details of that conversation, but a couple of really good friends of mine who are from Atlanta also visited me, and my aunt and cousin who live um, very far from me flew down for that surgery. So I just had a lot of support, and I was so very happy that I had, um, you know, family, friends, there people in my corner just to be there for me they were there for me the whole time um, my nurses at Emory were fantastic I will say that my favorite nurse her name was Patricia and I don't think she'll ever see this video and I will never say any other um, name of medical staff but Patricia was just so amazing and she was pretty young she was actually um, if I can remember not you know, a nurse for very long. She was in her early 20s, but she was so good at her job. Um, I remember Emory is also a teaching hospital, so I had a lot of medical students and um, PA students and nursing students do a lot of my vitals and checking. But I remember just that experience being so much more positive. I was not on fluids. I was not on an IV the whole time. I just felt better um, waking up and so they did send me home. Um, I remember they explained to me that I could either stay two nights, um, so I could either stay Friday and Saturday and come home on Sunday, um, and they would, you know, continue to monitor my drains because that's very important to milk your drains. So um, I remember the doctor, the resident, came back to say, you know, Brittany, you can either stay an extra night or we'll send you home. But you have to keep record of how much fluid is coming out of your drains and you have to do them yourself. You and your family will have to do them yourself. And um, he said, you know, you're young and smart. I think if you're ready, if you monitor yourself, if your family's there to help you, that you can go home. And so after about... 30 hours, um, I got to go home. I remember I got to go home very late in the evening on Saturday. So I had my surgery Friday morning and thankfully that Saturday I remember I got to go home. I will say I did not look as good as I did even though my um, experience uh, was more pleasant waking up from my um, neck dissection. I think a lot of that had to do with not feeling a lot of pain because I had a lot of nerve damage and a lot of no feeling in my like right side at all. I couldn't feel anything from the top of my right breast all the way up to my ear. And I still have slight numbness in this area. I was also really swollen and red. And basically you could just think of yourself as a Frankenstein. I could not move my neck. Um, it's still very weird and sensitive and odd and I still do experience neuropathy and just weird muscle tension and spasms on that side. But um, I did not look as 
fresh and lovely um, after my neck dissection as I did after my thyroidectomy. So even though I got to go home that Saturday, I didn't look terrible, but I didn't look as good. Um, so I remember when I did go and see my students perform that following day when I was home, um, back in my hometown, and I went to see my students perform their drama play. I was swollen. I did have, you know, that lazy eye. I remember I took the initiative to have my mom wash my hair. I don't know how, but I managed to curl my own hair. I looked cute enough to go, even though I was heavily drugged, as I said, but I was lucid enough. You know, I went, I showed up for my kids. They knew I would be swollen. Um, I was real, real um, slick, and I hid my drains in a tiny bag, one of those drawstring bags that I tied to my shirt or pinned to my shirt. So I was really like slick in hiding this nasty drain full of fluid. And some of the kids that were older, they thought it was cool, they saw it, but I also wore a scarf. I didn't want to look scary or not like myself. So as much as I could, um, you know, I hid the fact that I wasn't feeling well and I stayed for their show. Um, thankfully, the team of teachers I work with sort of picked up the slack and did my job for me that I would have done had I been healthy enough, you know, in prepping the students for their show. But they did the job, so basically all I had to do was, you know, go there and just be there for them. My boyfriend drove me and I watched their show and went home and for the next several weeks I recovered um, the best I could. So that's all I want to say about my neck dissection. Um, it did go well. I'm grateful even though I'm still healing from everything I've had done over the past 14 months. I'm doing really well and um, there is still pain. There is still, um, you know, improvement that is yet to be determined. But as I said before, I'll know probably within the next couple of weeks um, where my cancer markers are and how I'm doing. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off here. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Please feel free to message me on Instagram. Sirendipity Brit is one word on Instagram, unlike two on YouTube. Um, or please feel free to leave me comments um, down below. Please feel free to subscribe. You do not have to, but I know the more subscribers I have and the more comments and likes I get on videos, as you know, the more people will see this video, and I'd like there to be more positive videos about thyroid surgery, about neck dissections out um, online, and for the world to see than there are. So this is probably all you'll get from me um, until after Thanksgiving, so I do once again wanna wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. Please be safe if you're traveling. Um, please always love your loved ones best you can. If you're doing the best you can, that's always only the best you can do. Happy blessings to all of you guys. Thank you for watching, bye.